So this is session 25, reviewing shelter systems. I'm Walt McCarthy, and I'll be your instructor for the next uh, session here, and we'll start reviewing. Everything we're talking about is is involved in the shelter system. Everything in the in the shelter system has to work as a system. We talked about in previous sessions. We talked about air manifolds, what requirements there are for the air manifolds. We talked about cooking stoves. We talked about decontamination and showering. We talked about air filtration. Uh, we talked about the the, the hull and, and and radiation. But there's a few things which we didn't really touch on that are important. Just keep in mind, all these things have to function as a system. It's like taking a car and, and trying to figure out what's more important. If you take off a tire, um, if you take off the fuel injector, I mean, it all has to work. And one of the things that uh, we didn't talk about, but it's, it's important, is how you cook. And I found the best source for fuel and cooking because of the safety and the closed uh, the closed environment in the shelter is is to use alcohol an alcohol stove is is uh, is is pretty simple you can put alcohol uh, fires out with water it's not under pressure it's very clean burning um, if you get but you have to get the right alcohol you can also get alcohol oven and stove combination and you can put that in the shelter. There's a temperature gauge here. You can adjust the uh, temperature of the oven, the temperature of the stove. Um, this is this is pretty important because it, it 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 means all the food that you store in there. You can actually bake bread and and and, and so on. But you have to get the right fuel. Um, you don't want alcohol that's de that's uh, denatured with gasoline. You want to get marine alcohol, which is which is denatured by one of the three standard formulas. Um, you, you know, this can be all they're trying to do is use ethanol and make it so you can't drink it. That that's that's what that's what's happening here. Um, so you can denature it with methan alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, um, or um, some combination of this. But uh, make sure that whatever alcohol that you're going to be using comes from a, a marine supplier. And if, if if you get the wrong one, if, if if you get something that's that's not denatured properly, um, you're going to get a black film inside the shelter, and it's all over, and you have to wipe it off. The other thing we didn't talk much about or at all is communications. Uh, scanners are great. Um, you have to have the the right antenna up up on the surface. You can put that on your house. You can put it on top of the shelter. Um, if you're on a you know 20-story building, it, it's great to have it that that uh, high. Um, if, if, if you can get it up there. Um, and then uh, if you want to communicate two-way, you can use some type of two-meter, 70-centimeter transceiver. Now, these are, uh, these are ham. Uh, this is a ham radio here on the, on the, on the right. You, you do need a ham l license um, to, 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 to use these for transmitting. Uh, however, in an emergency, in disaster situations, anybody can uh, talk on it. The emergency frequency is usually 2 meters, 70 centimeter. Uh, these have about um, a, a power of about 5 watts. Um, and, you, and you do need a, a license for it. Uh, and then if you, if you go with some of the other, uh, the other units, you, you, know, you can go with mobile units or base station units. This is a multi-band transceiver. It'll, it'll transmit and receive on multiple frequencies. Um, but, of course, you need different antennas for those frequencies. So th that, that's another issue. And usually, I, uh, usually I, I put at least one of these in the, in the shelter. Uh, the, the military radios are, are, are usually next to it, and, and they can't be, be confused. But if you have this in, in, your, in your shelter, you're able to uh, talk to people and if you have a um, a walkie-talkie on the on the same band, two meter, seventy centimeter, whatever you want, that can that that can talk, you can have someone go out of the shelter and still communicate back to the to the base station and the uh, shelter. So uh, this is really uh, this this communication system is really a, a a a critical tool. You can get a base station too. This is a base station, um, and these are a little more expensive and and and. And they don't always work on 12 volt power. Most of the time, they're on 120 volt power. Now, the the frequencies that you want to deal with 
uh, AM radio stations, you're you're not going to get these on on these. Uh, Bearcat now has, I think, AM fr- frequencies and shortwave. Uh, but um, you, you have to get the right antenna for wh- whatever uh, transceiver that you are using. But the fundamental frequencies um, that that I think people should be on is the two meter band, which is the emergency band, 144 to 148 megahertz. You can transmit and, and receive on uh, on this with these radios and antennas. There's an amateur band. Uh, there's an amateur band 70 c- centimeter. Um, the R is receive, the X is neither receive or, or transmit. This is in, in POP. But being able to communicate with the outside is important. Just keep in mind that the ham radio is, is, is the only way that you can communicate station to station direct without going through any, uh, any satellite or, or anything. It is direct. And if you get the antenna up high enough, you, 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 you can talk hundreds of miles. You can go with a, one of these stations. And, and, and you know, if, if you get it up 50, 60 feet, that's, that's pretty good. Or you can get a wind-up that actually lays down. Uh, and then when you want to use it, you can go outside and, and turn this up. I used to uh, put these on the, right on the, on the shelter itself. Um, and you can do that. You won't get more than about a mile or two when it's when it's this this low. Uh, if you want to put it up in a tree, um, you have to make sure that the branches don't in- interfere with the uh, the three radials at the at the bottom. But somehow you you, you need communication in, in your shelter. Put this here. You have low range. Put it on the top of your house, on top of a tree. As long as there's not branches hitting it, you can go a lot farther. The times that that you can use uh, the ham radio, you can call for help if you have a blocked hatch. That's the that's the that's the first thing. Um, you can also report troop movements or or anything happening in the community, and you can use a ham radio uh, to connect to a physician through another through another uh, ham operator, and uh, that's been done a, f- a, a few times. Um, reporting tactical information. Uh, in in 9/11, some of the P10s that we had and some of the Cat 25s that we had, they were they were on the uh, f- frequencies, and they were they were talking to FEMA and Red Cross and reporting that hey, there's no uh, there's no radiation here, there's no there's no report of of uh, of, of chemical agents. Um, it's interesting. Only the the only way that they knew that that there wasn't any anything um, any biological or chemical warfare. Um, uh, reports was because the my customers had all the shelters around New York and Connecticut and New, and New Jersey, and they were able to actually test the air, uh, and they were reporting that back to FEMA and the Red Cross. At that time, um, no one had any any testing kits. And in Hurricane Hugo in uh, 1989, the ES-10 and the and the P-10 shelters. Uh, we're providing life support for for uh, over 50 people. Uh, at that time, we had CB radios. Uh, we only had a few ham radios out there. Ham radios is is much much better than a CB radio, uh, and the clientele on the on these radios for ham is a lot different than the CB ra- than the clientele for CB radios. Um, so you, you you can you can use these uh, radios to to talk to each other, talk to ham operators. Um, and they may or may not have access to a phone. We're assuming now, uh, in a disaster, that the uh, the satellite systems for the, for uh, for cell phones is not working, and I think that's a pretty fair assumption. Um, but yeah, you, you can you can use all these radios. Uh, you you can report to to all all kinds of people. Just get the right uh, the right uh, radio and uh, radio transceiver. And the right antenna, and and make sure that that the antenna is is up high, not not on the ground. The other thing which we didn't talk about, what's important is some type of emergency escape to to push this hatch open. There's a lot of different ways of of uh, doing this. Um, this is a hydraulic cylinder method, but this should always be in in the in the shelter. There should always be some way of getting out if 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 something blocks the hatch. If for some reason you don't want to use the uh, the, uh, the ham radio uh, on the emergency f- two meter frequency, um, you can use um, take this uh, hydraulic jack out, hook it up. This should be part of every shelter. 
it's required for the fallout shelters, but there's no regulation for NBC shelters or fallout shelters. Um, so you, the manufacturers can do anything.